All right, everybody. Before I even get into anything here, I have to front load this segment, otherwise I'll lose the retention of the Hassan fans in my audience, and they'll leave a dislike and a hate comment without actually watching to the point where I make the arguments that would probably make them go, oh, he did that? Wait, really? And then they'd go tippity-tippity-tappity and Google it, and then they'd find out he did, and they'd be like, oh, shit. So I'm gonna go ahead and front load this segment with those things, because otherwise, that's what's gonna happen. Um, Hassan used to be one of my favorite content creators uh, in the lefty sphere. I thought that he was doing a very good service by being so wide-reaching and progressive, but he started getting deep into foreign policy about a year and a half ago, and his takes have gotten abysmal, from uh, being anti-Taiwan and pro-China, anti-Hong Kong, anti-Tibet, um, he is also very pro-Russia, at least he has walked a lot of these takes back, but the fact that he defaulted to them and tried to defend them for so long uh, is definitely problematic. Everything from arguing that Russia was never going to invade, and if you thought they were going to invade despite all the evidence they were going to invade, uh, you were a war hawk who just wanted war with Russia, to claiming that uh, annexation of Crimea was totally justified, claiming that defense forces of um, Ukraine are all just Nazis trying to fight against uh, like the liberation of the Ukrainian people from the country not being a Russian satellite state, I guess. Um, he said a lot of really out-of-pocket stuff. And, um, in fact, Dylan Burns, a beloved journalist content creator who does on-the-ground endangering his life unarmed in the battlefields of Ukraine and Russia, um, journalism, uh, has actually nearly died multiple times by being, uh, struck, uh, at his position by the Russians, mind you. And they, of course, lied about why they did it, claiming that he was part of an armed squad when they were all unarmed press. Regardless, though, Russia's awful, Hassan's made excuses for it, but being in Ukraine, Dylan platformed a few Ukrainians uh, who are all mostly left-leaning, a couple of them even ex-Hassan fans, all to basically uh, see some clips of Hassan talking about the conflict between Russia and Ukraine and his takes on it. And the takes are just awful, I imagine, to hear if you are a Ukrainian who is currently under siege from Russia, and you're seeing this, like, extremely spoiled, wealthy, white, rich, Beverly Hills, LA, um, streamer talk about how you're a Nazi that needs to be conquered by the Russians, right? Um, now, they responded to Hassan, and they did so very well, and in response to this, instead of actually watching the video, or even trying to debunk it, or even hearing it out, and maybe finding that he was wrong. He instead refers to Dylan as a war tourist pervert when someone in his chat asks him to cover the video, bans that person, and then refuses to acknowledge it ever again. I do not like Hassan. Frankly, I can't remember more reasons why, but there are more. They're just not coming off the top of my head right now. So, I'm going to hope that anybody getting their panties in a bunch about me calling out Hassan in this video know that they're, they're, it's not unfounded, okay? It is not unfounded. Anyway, we actually have a development in the Hassan vs. H3H3 drama that has come out. It is called Hassan Piker is a Weasley Little Liar. What a Weasley Little Liar, dude. Um, I've not seen this outside of the first two minutes, which is when I paused it and decided I'm going to watch this on stream. Because I do genuinely think that besides, I don't want to focus too much my attention and energy on lefty infighting, but someone like Hassan is so overwhelmingly influential, they're so big and such a big name, that I think you can understand why that would be an exception, <laughs> you know? Uh, regardless though, let's hear out Ethan. Obviously, I, like, Ethan could totally post cringe, but... What I found so frustrating is how many people on the left are genuinely convinced Ethan is a Zionist? Um, or like pro, like, settlements, pro-expansion of Israel, pro-genocide uh, of the Palestinians. I mean, bro, he even calls it a genocide on the Palestinians. He doesn't even, like, mince words there. Um, it's really, it's really, like, sad to see as Hassan's community desperately tries to set this, like, false narrative that... H, like, like Ethan Klein is something that he's not. He is like very openly anti uh, IDF, like attacks on Palestinian civilians and stuff. He is very critical of uh, Netanyahu. Um, but man, like the bitterness with which Hassan will dishonestly go after you if he hates you is 
it, it knows no ends, and we're about to see an example in a moment. So let's watch. Hello. I'm here to address something that happened on Thursday's show. We were doing our post-election COPE stream, and um, the subject of Israel had came up, and here is what was said about it. Let's take a look. Trump is so pro-Israel, it's, it's insane. Uh, Not only is he pro-Israel, I mean, he and hates Bibi, Arabs. Him yeah, and Bibi, sure. like, talk a lot, and Bibi's be become a lot like Trump. So. Yeah, Bibi's his guy. They're like homies. Bibi's celebrating yep. last night. Just the other day, Bibi fired a really good guy that... A lot of people are pissed about it, mm -hmm. and he fired him because they d had a disagreement, and that's like so Trump quoted. Well, he was like a moderating voice in the war room, yeah, and he got rid of him, or at least a more moderate voice. I don't know anything about the guy. Here we're talking about uh, Yoav Galat, who was a member of Netanyahu's war cabinet, who just yesterday was fired by Netanyahu because... So this is the point. I guess I only got a minute in. This is the point where I stopped when I saw this first come up in my recommended. And I decided I was going to save it for stream. Here's my theory. Um, H3, or Ela and Ethan, are very clearly saying Trump is extremely pro-Israel and pro-Bibi Netanyahu. And Netanyahu is very pro-Trump. They're going to enable each other's worst behaviors and worst actions. Worst actions. And it is going to be so much worse in Gaza now. Uh, Netanyahu has already been empowered and has started firing people in his cabinet that are not as radical as him and all ref and refer to all of these things as a problem because obviously the two of them are not in favor or, or backers of what Israel has been doing militarily and insofar as its expansionist policy. I'm guessing Hassan is going to use the fact that they referred to a guy who probably is also bad but not as bad as Netanyahu as like an okay guy or whatever, they're going to blow that massively out of proportion and try to frame it as though like Ethan's a massive fan of that guy and he loves everything that he did and he's defending a war criminal. I'm sure at some point we're going to get the line from Hassan that Ethan was defending a war criminal there. Just getting out in front of it. I've not seen what happens. I've just seen up to about two seconds after this point. Um, like two more syllables out of Ethan's mouth. But that is my theory because I don't know what else he could have said there or they could have said there, that you could get, get upset about, right? He wanted to end the war. And uh, now who wants to continue the war? And therefore he fired him. Once he was fired, people in Israel took to the streets and are protesting because as far right as Netanyahu's, you know, war cabinet is, he is literally a moderating voice in that cabinet and was the only one representing the people and pushing for the war to end. The problem with uh, Yoav, which I don't even think Ela probably knew at the time, because this war has been going on for so long, uh, is that he's somewhat comes. infamous for this quote here. He uh, said, yeah, on "Here a, it is. He's going to have said and done some awful stuff too, but he's not going to be as bad as Netanyahu, and the point is still going to stand. But they're going to attack this very minute, like, oh, but you didn't know this thing about how they're awful, but because they were awful and you said they were okay, that means that you're. It's like the most like." It's the weirdest gotcha shit, you know? Like, do, are you guys are seeing what I'm seeing here. Like, it is the setup for, like, the weirdest, dishonest gotchas to say, oh, you accidentally admitted you're pro-Israel. It's like, what? <laughs> okay. October 8th, um, there will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. We are fighting human animals, and we act accordingly. When he's talking about um, entering Gaza in the first phases of the war, now, a lot of people look at this um, language and think that it's dehumanizing and genocidal. And I'm one of those people. I agree that this, this is a it's horrible thing to people. say. And I don't defend him. And I never That's would mine. defend him uh, a statement like this, which I assume people who watch this show know and understand. Now, a year plus later, for whatever reason, this is the same guy who's advocating for the war to end in Israel. And Elah, looking over uh, the news, sees that people are rioting, that people are upset, and that people who want the war to end are upset that he got fired. And that's basically all that happened. What people are also not uh, very cognizant, cognizant of on the left these days, due in large part to the influence of Hassan and his ilk, is Israel's been turned into this monolith. Like, Israel has talked about, like, Mordor is talked about in Lord of the Rings, you know? You gotta remember, this is just a country. Much like America, it is massively divided politically. 
Um, there are people th who have good beliefs, bad beliefs, and a lot of just incongruous, insane, uh, like, misinformed beliefs in between. A lot of normies and grillers, a lot of people who just want the war and fighting to stop, a lot of people who are just scared because they have bombs exploding over their heads constantly. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a country with a population who are split down different margins in their political beliefs and their support for the current administration. So, of course, there are riots and protests in Israel uh, protesting the war because not every Israeli is in favor of what the country is doing. And they're there protesting it. I don't think they deserve to be kicked out of that land or to die uh, like many lefties, and you can deny it, but many lefties, especially in Hassan's sphere, will say whenever they get emotional enough about these topics and they let the mask slip, um, it, it's very clear that there's been a very oversimplifying of this situation by online leftists. I think primarily because this is such a complicated situation and people like Hassan really don't care to put in the work of learning about this stuff. They just want to keep on, you know, streaming and just kind of low effort making easy money and make getting easy views. And it's sort of a feigning understanding the issue. And so instead of actually digging deep into the topic, he feigns so much and his ilk feigns so much moral objection to the situation that they are just able to oversimplify it by saying it's evil uh, because that's that's supposedly all they believe of it, right? They don't have to talk any deep, more deeply about it and accidentally reveal they know very little of the situation. And most people do know very little of the situation because this is one of the most complicated geopolitical issues in human history, maybe the most complicated. We're talking about the fact that he's the only person that wants to end the war. And I personally don't understand how that's not relevant. Here from The Guardian, a left-leaning newspaper you guys all probably know. Here's a headline. Benjamin Netanyahu fires Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, triggering protests in Israel. Demonstration in Tel Aviv, widely seen by Israel's allies as a break on far-right elements of the Israeli government. Again, this isn't just my opinion. This is opinion that's held by uh, international, uh, internationally, that he is a moderating voice on the war cabinet, once again, advocating for the war to end, which is what I thought we all wanted. Here's another article from The Guardian. Yoav Gallant reportedly says Israeli army has nothing left to do in Gaza. The ousted defense minister also quoted as saying Netanyahu rejected peace deals against advice of his security officials. As you can see, I'm not saying any of this to defend him. What he said and what he's done uh, should very well be investigated by the uh, International Criminal Corps. And if he's found, he should submit to an investigation. If he's found guilty, then charge him. But what I am saying is that I think that while Elo misspoke and said he's a good guy, her intention was that, you know, this guy is trying to end the war. And I'm... See, guys, all it takes. She slipped up. She she accidentally referred to someone who had a good take on a thing and, and was relevant to the conversation as doing a good thing. Just She, she wasn't so hyper-specific with her words. Gave those folks a, uh, a line of attack. All right, let's see all the comments calling Ela a genocide or whatever. Pretty sure we're all on the same page as that being a good thing. I feel like the reason I brought it up was mainly to express the frustration with Bibi and him firing the one guy that was somewhat, you know, attempting at moderation. It wasn't really so much to say Gallant is a good guy. I shouldn't have used that word. That was a bad choice on my part, considering stuff that he has said that I was not even thinking of. Really coming from the concerning feeling of like, we have Trump in office and Bibi just fired the guy that is opposing him. That's all I was trying to say, but I, I do understand that was not a good choice of words and I would not have said that again. So I'm stepping away for a little while from being on camera and being on the podcast. It's um, it's too much and it's not fair for everybody. And... That's rough. It, it sucks, but like, yeah, Hassan's community has been genuinely attacking this couple for years now. Um, like ever since the Leftovers podcast fell apart. And you got to understand, these two have been attacked by, like, Nazis, right-wingers, and drama YouTubers incessantly for, like, eight years now, six years now, maybe. Um, ever since they stopped doing, like, cringe, anti-SJW-adjacent type stuff back in the day, um, they grew well out of that. And the right has been mad at them and giving them shit for a long time. The fact that Hassan's community 
brigading them this hard is leading to Ela kind of withdrawing from internet presence really does go to show that Hassan has built a really gross, spiteful, angry community within the most core, core, dedicated part of it. Most of the people watching him are just normal progressive people that like his politics and have no idea even half the stuff I said at the start ever happened, probably more than half they're unaware of. And so when they hear Hassan say that H3 is a Zionist and his wife was in the IDF, which is a true statement, but if you were born in Israel, you kind of have to serve in the IDF or they'll put you in prison. Um, so yeah, she chose serving in the IDF over prison when she was 18. Um, I, I, you know, evil, burn the witch, I guess. But uh, besides that, like, it's just Hassan and his ilk, the most dedicated and spiteful part of that audience, gaslighting and tricking the more normy, larger ring, the sphere, the donut of, of the main majority, the meat of the audience, right? Um, most Hassan fans are not the awful people harassing Ethan Klein. It's just the most dedicated and insane ones um, that do everything Hassan wants and immediately do his bidding and defend his honor. Most of Hassan's fans are just normal people who will jump to his defense when they hear criticism of him because they have been guarded from any of the dirt on him. Deliberately so. Uh, yeah. So that, that's where our head was at when we said that. But now people like Hassan are going on their channels and accusing us of uh, supporting yeah. a war criminal. Anyway, yeah. here's what Hassan said yeah. this evening about the clip it. that sent everybody into a frenzy. Here we go. Crazy. I just All hate right. how Ethan is brigading smaller content creators like the D program because he couldn't get to you as far. Uh, the projection is actually crazy, dude. What the fuck? The projection. Dude, H3 and Ela have been getting mass brigaded. Hassan is larger than them. And Hassan's orbiters and his entire sphere have been harassing them nonstop. Yeah, the deep program is a tanky podcast, by the way. Fucking gross how he keeps speaking smaller content creators that are just getting by and he is sitting on his golden throne just straight up harassment. I know, he, he's just... I can't get over the fact that they keep fucking crying about me responding to these communities. Like, this is the biggest socialist podcast. They have like, they, they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Second channel, Second Thought has two million subscribers. When can I, when can I respond to these people? When? When is it warranted? Like, give me a fucking break. He's just... It's concern trolling. <laughs> It's concern trolling. It's because they don't have any arguments. They're, like Hassan's biggest uh, method for avoiding uh, disagreement and criticism is to call anybody who calls him out obsessed. And that, that's a fair criticism if someone is just like making random hit piece videos on you, like like TMZ gossip style stuff, nothing really substantial or, or like anything that matters. But when it's like genuinely calling out rhetoric and opinions and takes, that's the kind of thing that you're generally expected to respond to and be able to defend yourself from criticism for as a content creator. And Hassan can't do it. He's not capable of it. He, he genuinely doesn't want his audience to even be exposed to criticisms of him because they are that iron ironclad most of the time. And so he just frames it as they're obsessed, uh, they're insane, don't give them the time of the day, no free clout, and he ignores it. That's how he does it. Like aligning with all these fucking drama peddlers like Keemstar and shit in an there effort to try and get me fucking banned is psychotic to me, you know? I like just don't Keemstar? get it. I don't understand it. What a fucking liar, dude. <laughs> what a weasley little fucking liar. He's just We got the emote in the chat. Post it, guys. We got we got the emote. Ha smash in the chat. Straight up lying. He's just lying right now. In fact, this is a lie that he keeps saying is that I'm somehow aligning myself with Keemstar. Once again, I'll show you. I went and fished out the original s stories. I was talking about Frogan getting shit from a ton of conservatives. Um, at H3H3, congratulations. This is your audience now. I wonder how your Muslim employees feel. I love Ethan's targeted harassment campaign. This is because he made a, um, a uh, Instagram reel responding to a tweet from uh, Frogan calling him out. Be honest, you absolute fucking losers. She literally said she hopes vets get PTSD. Oh yeah, she also said that. That like she hates all US veterans and the only good ones are the ones who admit that they're evil, that, that they were evil for joining the military. Otherwise, she hopes they get PTSD and, and kill themselves. Um, 
Or is PTSD also a brand of hummus? I wonder which crowd is DMing her hate messages. Nice trying to avoid accountability for literally anything, ever. Grow the fuck up. I can confirm to you, uh, Hassan and his sphere uh, and his orbit are so unanimously hated outside of the left, I guarantee you it is not Ethan's community attacking them. Um, I know for a fact the drama community really hates Frogan and Hassan's communities. Uh, the right obviously really hates them. There are a lot of normie spheres that really hate, uh, like the commentary community really hates Frogan and Hassan. So it is almost certainly them calling Frogan and Hassan out. I know for a fact that like the commentary bros are the ones who started the Frogan the Hut meme, the Frogan job of the Hut meme, um, and making like the AI images of, of Frogan as like job of the hut that was the commentary community so in, when it's like mean-spirited like edgy attacks like that it's very obviously not coming from ethan's instagram reels responding to tweets towards him it's coming from the right wing communities that have been upset with them and going after them that harshly for years now talking about frogan getting shit from a ton <clears throat> I have no pity, but blah, blah, blah. So this is her clip of her saying she hopes American soldiers die or get PTSD. Um, 7.5 million views. Sadly, no one cares about anti-Semitism, but in America, people do care about veterans. Probably shouldn't have said that. Um, yeah, basically, uh, they're claiming that it must be Ethan's community harassing her and Hassan when the video clip of Frogan saying that she hopes veterans die and get PTSD has 7.5 million views. I'm going to guess it was probably more the 7.5 million angry-ass people who did not like what she had to say in this tweet, and not H3H3's community that are responsible for that. Just going to guess. Just a wild guess. ton of conservatives for her wonderful remarks about hoping American uh, military men get PTSD. I was showing it yeah, to say dude. it's not my fault that she... D donut operator and angry cops these are all massive like right-wing gun like tactical tactical channels on youtube that have multi-million sub fan bases that that were quote tweeting the frogan clip shit talking veterans it is so dude the desperation to even like okay so because the primary get battle of people like hassan is to like attack other people on the left and to like prove their virtuousness on the left um, they use the hate they're getting from the right and claim it's coming from other people on the left to make those people look worse. She's getting harassed when this clip of hers going mega viral on Twitter and being called Dick out Mertz. by the worst people on the internet, right? Yep. Look at these are all conservative shitbags. These are all people that I disagree with and have openly said terrible oh, I things love this. about. Including well, here's, here's one of my favorite other things. In a previous thing, this was like a, 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 the last video, Ethan H3H3 had posted this clip of Drama Alert, aka Keemstar, shit talking Frogan as evidence that it was clearly not his community attacking Frogan. It was probably Keemstar's and all these other YouTubers. And Hassan's community, and, and Hassan himself framed it as H3H3 posting this image to support Keemstar. That is the level of dishonesty and sliminess and desperation to defame the image of others um, that we are dealing with here. Hassan is a master manipulator. These are all people that I disagree with. Actually, no, he's, he's not really good at it. He's it, The people he's manipulating aren't particularly good at avoiding being manipulated. Let, let's be real. Um, he's an okay manipulator, and he is easily manipulating easy targets for manipulation. That, that's a better way of putting it. And have openly said terrible things about, including Keemstar. So, like, the way that he singles him out and says, oh, Ethan is co-signing Keemstar, is he's a fucking liar, dude. <laughs> he's a weaselly little liar. The person that they're talking about is Yoav Gallant. Yoav Gallant, alongside Benjamin Netanyahu, has an active... Mind you, Hassan is, like, doing this whole, like, this guy's so awful thing as if it is in any way a debunk or an ad like like a attack on the morality of them it's like oh they agreed with a thing this guy said well did you know did you guys know mask off a really good guy moderating voice god i can't wait to read the uh the comments of this video they're gonna be so insufferable we're, we're due for a cleanse. We got a big, 
We got a big wave of subscribers in the last few days, so we're kind of due for a cleanse. There's probably some cringe that came in that wave that we got to kind of filter out. Petition for his arrest by the ICC. The person that they are talking about here before getting fired by I Benjamin Netanyahu, the, the person that they're calling a moderating voice, said this. Genocide defenders assemble. Which is the reason why there is an active petition, an active application for a warrant for his arrest by the ICC. I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I'm legitimately shocked. The problem why I'm frustrated with this whole situation, you guys know me, I'm more than willing, more than happy to address um, shortcomings and errors that I've made and, and take every chance I can to learn and grow from them, right? But the problem I have is that there's our subreddit and our community is over, over ridden Overran. with these eight year long time ultra fans who can no longer, you know, tolerate us or they can no longer walk down this path with us as we've thrown our lot in with the Nazis, right? But like these same people, okay, have, they, they hold no standards. And Hassan can go out there and glaze an international terrorist organization and its leader and for those who don't know something hassan likes to do is get random popular streamers and put them in his cuck chair next to him and have them uh just sit there and react to terrorist propaganda it's really bizarre have you seen it it's crazy if you haven't seen these clips oh my god hassan makes more Oh, you want to see a Houthi uh, musical? <laughs> a Houthi musical. Here it is. I think I found it. Yeah, here's the raw video. He asks. He asked this guy, "Do you want to see a Houthi musical?" I do things that you probably don't like. Yeah, like we took that fucking Saudi deal. You did? Oh yeah, me and XUC both. Oh no, damn. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we did. I'm sorry. I needed the money. Oh, you want to see a Houthi musical? Sure. These were the people that the Saudis were killing, by the way. Just so you know, these fucking musically gifted individuals. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I need the money. Guys. I'm gonna drop my food. Yeah. I'm so what did he get up and walks away and leaves them there? Wait, we're getting to the best part. I have no idea what this says. It's probably really bad. I shouldn't pop to it. It's just blasting. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we skipped it a little bit. Bring us back to it. Bring us back with the flags. Now, some based motherfuckers translated what these signs or these banners say. And it's actually a very common saying. Um, and it says, one of the lines in it is, uh, death to the Jews on those banners there. Uh, a lot of the revolutionary and extremist groups fighting for, um, you know, against, like, imperialism or whatever, granted, that, and that is based, are unfortunately very anti-Semitic. And so when you do this whole, like, dick-riding stuff, you're, you're, even though it's not obvious, you're basically showing, like, a Nazi rally. Like, there, there might as well be swastikas on those banners, yeah. Houthis also use child soldiers, and Hassan platformed one? Yeah. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. He's done that with multiple content creators. We just puts them there in front of, like, terrorist propaganda. And then tries to, like, use the chat and himself being there to pressure them into agreeing with it. And validating it. He desperately needs other clouded up figures validation for his stuff. It's really weird. Like, I don't know how people watch that shit and don't cringe all the way through it. And, and glaze up Hassan Nasrallah like he's uh, a fucking great dude. Hassan Nasrallah was assassinated. Uh, Hezbollah is a is a oh. paramilitary organization that is also a uh, part of the Lebanese parliament. Do we like them or no? I think as a resistance group, they're pretty successful against Israel. They are a terrorist organization. 
He won't. He won't. He won't stick to anything. Like they're de- designated. Oh, they're they are designated by the American state okay. as a terrorist organization. I do not like them. Then, well, <laughs> like I like what you like. Well, I don't have an issue with them. Let's just say I'm going to give you guys a crash course on Hezbollah. Let's there start back from the beginning. Uh, 1983 suicide truck bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. 45 embassy staff were killed. 34 injured. They bombed the French Marine barracks in Beirut. 300 dead. Attempted murder of the head of the Turkish Jewish community. Suicide bombing of the Argentine Jewish Mutual Association building. Buenos Aires, 85 killed, 300 injured. I don't. Have- yeah, but Hassan doesn't care. They're Jewish. I have an issue with them, let's just say. Bombing of a restaurant near the U.S. Air Force Base in Spain. 18 killed, 83 injured. Car bombs of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. 11 killed, 58 injured. Hijacking of Kuwait airline planes. Killed, 4. Suicide bombing at the Israeli Embassy in Buenos Aires. 29 killed. Not fun to have your own game played against you, huh, Hassan? Because I'm sure Hassan probably, well, he might have, might be willing to defend this stuff, but he probably didn't have this stuff in mind when he said he doesn't dislike the organization. So I find it funny how, like, Ela and Ethan clearly didn't have the shit that Hassan talked about that guy in mind when they talk about how Netanyahu firing him is trying to eliminate dissonance in his war council that want to try and de-escalate the conflict. Instead, but when you use the same logic against Hassan, it's like, oh, well, it turns out you're pro-terrorism. Like, undisputedly. It's like, it doesn't feel good to have the same logic applied to you, does it, Hassan? 240 injured. I don't have an issue with them, let's just say. Suspected of carrying out suicide bombing missions against Israeli vacationers in Bulgaria. Indicted for the assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik al-Hariri. I don't have an issue with them. Hezbollah participated in the Syrian civil war on the side of Assad violent dictator. They're responsible for the genocide Cringe. of well over 500,000 Syrians. Here's an article from Amnesty International Syria. Surrender or starve. Strategy displacing thousands amounts to crimes against humanity. Does that sound familiar? I don't have an issue with them. While the Syrian government stated aim has been to vanquish opposition fighters, its simple use of surrender America, or starve though. tactics has involved a devastating co- combination of sieges and bombardments. I don't have an issue with them. These have been part of a systematic as well as widespread attack on civilians that amounts to crimes against humanity. Sounds like what Israel's doing in Gaza. I don't have an issue with them. Relentless attacks on civilians in addition to immense suffering caused by siege attack, this deliberate attacks on civilians and civilian objects cause unimaginable misery. The government and Hezbollah forces burned the agricultural fields just as a form of punishment, even though we couldn't access them. I don't have an issue with them. Once again, sounds like what Israel's doing in Gaza. As of May 21, a minimum of 580,000 people is estimated to have been killed, with 13 million Syrians being displaced and 7 million refugees forced to flee Syria. I don't have an issue with them, let's just say. Here's some quotes from Hezbollah leaders, including Narshala. Our struggle will end only when this entity, if Israel, is obliterated. We recognize no treaty with it, no ceasefire, and no peace agreement. According to Shal Shai, Nasar said in a speech delivered in Beirut. And this is a big part of why um, this issue of, like, ceasefire now is so difficult, because, um... Israel no, will never stop being under attack. Its civilians will never stop being under attack. I've got Israeli fans. Like, they were born in Israel. They didn't choose that. They didn't, make a char- they didn't choose, like, Israel as their starting zone on the character creation screen. They were just born there. And if they are old enough, then they probably already are or have served or will serve in the IDF, legally uh, mandated to do so. They have no choice. Um, and a lot of those people have woken up in the middle of the night to bombs exploding above their house. And I'm sure people are like, yeah, well, Palestinians wake up to dying to bombs falling in their house. So do Israelis. And I'm not making excuses for what Israel's doing to Palestine, slash Gaza, slash the Palestinians, slash also the settlements in the West Bank and all that. Um, Not making excuses for it. But you cannot claim Israel should just stop fighting, stop throwing any stones whatsoever, uh, as if if they do that, there are not going to be significant, both from the radical groups in Gaza and their allies, there isn't going to be more retaliation. Israel does still have to have U.S. backing and support. Otherwise, some pretty bad, some pretty bad folks are going to end up killing a lot of innocent people. What do the Jews want? They want security and money. Throughout history, the Jews have been all his most cowardly and avaricious creatures. If you look all over the world, you will find no one more miserly and greedily than they are. I don't have an issue with them. If we search the entire world for a person more cowardly, despicable, weak, and feeble in psych, mind, and ideology, and religion, we would not find anyone like the Jew. Notice, I do not say the Israeli. I don't have an issue with them. Badi. That is the guy uh, who Hassan was uh, criticizing the IDF assassination of, mind you. Kain Ban, in his 23 October 2002 article, quoted Narshala as saying, if Jews all gather in Israel, it will save us the trouble of going after them worldwide. The history of Jews has proven that regardless of the Zionist proposal, they are a people who are evil in their ideas. The state of the grandsons of apes. And I will. 
I will say there is some like giga irony, like like genuinely like giga irony about the fact that Israel's existence is like the, the Zionist worldview is that Israel should exist such that it can be like a, a nation for Jews because not like. Jewish people as a group have been very spread out throughout the world, through Europe, all, like all throughout like Americas and everything. Um, and there have been in every, almost every country in the world, there has been like some sort of massive crackdown on the rights of Jewish people. Um, there have been genocides. There has been enslavement. There has been ju just like eugenics and uh, disenfranchisement. Um, it has been a long standing thing. Like Jewish people are one of the most, maybe the most, like attacked group in all of human history like they i think the first bigotry ever was probably against jewish people um and because of that long history and the holocaust being one of the worst instances and in very recent in history there are of course still i think yeah still living holocaust survivors um the existence of israel is meant is justified by zionists as a safe haven for jews because if you're jewish and you're polish or austrian or Hung, you know, and you could be from anywhere, right? It doesn't matter where you're from. Where do you go if your country falls into anti-Semitism? Like, what do you do, right? That's the, the logic is like, where would you flee? You would have to flee somewhere friendly. But what if there was always somewhere friendly? Somewhere that had a military and was fully capable of defending itself, right? That is like the Zionist ideas that Israel is supposed to be their safe haven, especially if the world falls into like a massive anti-Semitic like World War II type deal again. Um, here's the thing, though. Israel happens to be smack dab in the middle of just so many enemies <laughs> that want to kill them. It's like, it exists to be a safe haven, but everywhere, like, there is just enemies everywhere trying to take them out. <laughs> the irony is, like, you gotta admit, the irony is pretty crazy, right? I'm not laughing, listen, it, it's the, the irony, right? You, you see it. They're like, of all the places in the world that they could have chosen, right? It's like, damn, dude. <laughs> You're surrounded on all fronts by people who want to kill you. Pigs, the Zionist Jews. And he condemns them as the murderers of the prophet. According to Hassan Nasrallah, he said the Jews invented the legend of the Nazi atrocities. I don't have an issue with them, let's just say. So my point is, if you're going to come down so hard on Ela for what she said, where's the energy when Hassan defends Hezbollah and Hassan Nasrallah, who is a violent, genocidal, anti-Semite, who mass murdered Syrians and committed terrorism all around the world. Where's all the eight year subscribers flooding into his community saying they can't follow him in these footsteps anymore? Well, he, he suppresses all that stuff and frames it as like uh, people that are just deranged or whatever. Um, but uh, Hassan is losing a lot of support. Um, he might have experienced a bump from the election. I'm, I'm sure he probably did. He must have like any content creator would that does politics but uh since then and after and before it he has been bleeding support quite substantially um and a big part of it is that hassan lying so much unnecessarily while it benefits him in that so many people end up neglecting to look in into any of the stuff calling him out the more he builds his foundation on on like a sand of lies the harder he's going to fall. And so because Hassan says such batshit insane out-of-pocket lies about people, the fans of his that do go out of their way to check, or, or even just to leave a hate comment, and they accidentally watch a bit of the original thing that Hassan complains about, they quickly end up realizing that Hassan lied to them, and they fall out of his uh, fan base. And that has been happening more and more and more, where the, the lies are catching up to Hassan, and he's losing a lot of support really fast, particularly to Destiny. He spent a lot of time over-exaggerating his uh, grievances with Destiny and how bad Destiny supposedly was, calling Destiny a Nazi and stuff. And uh, when a Hassan fan sees Destiny just demolishing some, like, MAGA weirdo and realizes he's not a Nazi, they jump ship from Hassan's lying ass and they get on board with Destiny. So... Um, whether you like it or not, Destiny's been gaining like 10k subs every few days at this point, and Hassan's been losing 10k subs every few days at this point. So yeah, um, the, it's just naturally happening, where people are migrating out of Hassan's community, and they are getting fed up with it. Uh, the lies that he's told about other content creators that criticize him are catching up to him. 
Israel. I can't believe I'm calling Nasrallah base. I mean, listen. Listen. You have to remember. You have to remember something, okay? A lot of these dudes, you see them in their fucking fits. And you. And unironically, Vosh has uh, been regaining his support as his subscribers are nearly back up to 500k from the H3 drama. And unlike Hassan, has more commitment to his ideals. That is true. I've also noticed that um, the left has memory hold the lolly stuff uh, badly. Um. It really sucks, because, like, um, what ended up happening, I'm pretty sure, is either Vosh or his fans made a fake version, like, a fake screenshot of what was supposedly in the, uh, like, porn folder that he leaked on stream. Uh, the thing is, I had multiple friends who watch Vosh live when he is streaming, who saw him leak the folder on live stream where, like, you couldn't have edited anything, there's only a five-second delay, he hadn't deleted the VOD yet, or, and nothing could have been changed. They saw it with their own eyes, sadly. They saw it with their own eyes. Not to mention, obviously, the original video has been saved all over the place and reposted by countless big YouTubers. There's a reason why no one with a large platform outside of, like, the, the orbit of the online left that he's in has uh, opted for the idea that there was not bad shit in that folder. It's because every content creator knows what was in it. One of the images was literally, this is how I had it described to me by the person who was there live when they saw it. Two underage girls, Lolly, eating out a horse's asshole was one of the images. One of the images was that. Um, and a lot of people, because there's like fake version, I was there, yeah. So a lot of people that were there, like you can't really gaslight them, they saw what they saw. But because a lot of people weren't there and they've just heard about it, whenever I mention this, I usually get a lot of people uh, yelling at me saying, Oh, Zan's lying. Ah, oh, Z clearly Zan betrayed Vosh. I got that comment recently because I had brought this up and they clearly just saw the, the fake version and fell for that. Um, and that's pretty, that, that definitely sucks. But yeah, um, Vosh has pretty successfully gotten his community and a lot of the left <clears throat> to memory hole the content of that folder. But the rest of the internet has not. So, I don't know how that's going to go. We'll have to see. Man, the left is in a rough state right now. You hear about, like, some of their attitudes about, like, gay people, for example, and you immediately fucking resort to Orientalist perspectives, not realizing that these motherfuckers are better read than you by a million. Okay? Like, it's not even... No, it's not a broken clock situation. No, dude. Half of these dudes literally get educated in america and in the uk what the fuck are you guys talking about this is why it's orientalist to literally look at these dudes and go oh no they're fucking barbaric baboons and like sometimes they get this shit right no dude he knows who the fuck cares that's not what anybody is talking about we're talking about the fact that they're like anti-semitic and like part of a terrorist group that targets civilians it's crazy the same issue that everybody has with the IDF is that they're, like, a far-right, ideologically bent, like, uh, arguably backing of a, like, ethnic genocide ideology against the Palestinians and are targeting a ridiculous amount of force at, like, Palestinian civilians who are completely innocent. Like, it's the same problem. They're, do they're doing the same shit, and I have a problem with that, it, that, that behavior, regardless of who's doing it. Who, where is the consistency? He's read more books than you could ever imagine. And also, ultimately, he is regarded as a pretty brilliant uh, a person. All right, I can't watch any more of this. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it with Hassan and his, his pro-terrorism shit. You guys, I hopefully you guys understand why I don't like Hassan anymore. Um, at, like, even if you're willing to excuse this stuff, most people aren't, and that is a big part of why the left is failing online. Our biggest representative, the person who you guys are willing to let get away with anything, is someone who actively repulses people now by how evidently full of shit he is and how ideologically motivated against America, just as a principle, regardless of how much that idea aligns with the truth that he is. Um, anyway. With all that said, I don't really think I have any any finishing up thoughts here. I just want to ask you guys, if you enjoyed, to leave a like. Uh, every single thumbs up on my streams and videos is like casting a blue ballot for YouTube to push my content and the algorithm to new people uh, and old viewers as well. So I really do appreciate it. We really do need a lot of, you know, 
fan support and engagement these days if we are going to start to grow past or t even close to the level of where the rights kind of media empire online has been. And these election results really go to show that we need to counter that. So don't just drop a like with support for me, drop it with spite for conservatives. Leave a comment as well if you want to boost the effect of the like as well, it really does help a ton. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon if you haven't already, so YouTube actually tells you when I go live or upload a new video, because if you don't, they won't. Make sure to follow my social medias as well if you um, want to see more from me on other platforms. Otherwise, well, I, I don't know, you don't have to, but you should also join my Discord server which is totally free to join, is the main hub of my community and fan base. And on top of that, once a week on Fridays, I host a game event, a call-in stream, or a watch party, and I announce all my new uploads and streams there. So if you enjoyed, then I hope to see you there. It is a great place to be, so I hope to see you there a lot. It's, it's great. It's awesome. Watch parties on Fridays. And of course, if you want to support me directly, financially, you can afford it, and you feel like helping me keep the lights on and a roof above my head here at the Xander Hall studio, then please consider donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or supporting me financially through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Patreon, uh, or buying merch through the Streamlabs link down below in the description. But regardless of how you watch me or support me, even if you're just a lurker, I really do appreciate it. And as always, I hope to see you again, and I hope you have a good one.